at the Veterans Health Administration, what we do is we allow and give veterans the health benefits and some of the other benefits that they deserve after all the great things that they've done for this country and serving it. And here in the Minneapolis VA, we've got a lot of different um, types of committees, types of uh, events that are really good for all veterans. And if somebody doesn't know, they can always look it up online. They can come into the VA. They can contact their county veteran service officer. We serve those who have served this country. You know, we take care of veterans after they have done their time serving this country and we provide them health care. That's what we do. We give them the benefits that they have earned while they serve this country. So the, the communities that we really are reaching out to right now are the LGBTQ plus and those who identify as female because they have not been reached out to before. We're trying to make sure that they understand the benefits that they are allowed because they're veterans just like any other veteran and they deserve to get the benefits that they have earned through their service to this country. So I, um, I am a combat veteran or a combat disabled veteran. I served in the U.S. Army for four years on active duty. Uh, it was probably some of the best time of my life, to be honest with you, from my early 20s. Uh, lots of friendships, amazing camaraderie, and the networking that I did unintentionally during that time probably changed my life for the better in more ways than I could have realized. Uh, I went to school afterwards and decided that I wanted to continue a life in service, and that's what I've been doing since leaving the military, to be honest with you, whether it's nonprofit or back on the federal side, it's really been impactful and to continue to give back to my fellow brothers and sisters is probably the one thing I'll do until the day that I die. Um, but placing any, anybody who comes to me in touch with one of our veteran care coordinators uh, is, is one of the, the greatest added benefits to that communication. Um, some of the, amongst the, VA, the health services that are provided, there's hormone treatment, there's uh, intimate partner, uh, treatment for intimate partner violence and the after effects of that. There's also, uh, I believe it's heart health, cancer prevention and treatment as well, um, amongst a whole host of other opportunities and, and services that are available to our LGBT, our LGBT veterans. And um, I was stationed on the West Coast, grew up on the East Coast, so culture shock right there, right? And so as I get to Fort Lewis and I'm skipping past basic training and all of that, all I saw was a sea of people, there's diversity, there's men, there's women. I don't know who is a part of the LGBTQIA++ community at that time. It wasn't my focus, it was just serving my country, getting through honorably and not getting an Article 15 or dishonorably discharged. Um, um, I never feared 100% of the time that I would be found out for being a gay man but before Don't Ask, Don't, Don't Tell was repealed. Um, but when I found my cohort of friends, I just saw how everyone really relied on everyone to get through the day, but not, you're going to make it, you're going to be okay. It was really pointing out resources, identifying places to go to connect with more people in the community, but really to show you that this is your job, this is your life. You have to hide this part of yourself for so long, but don't let it detract from all of the positive that you're actually putting out daily because we may not see what we're actually doing to impact the other people that are on the other side of whatever that line might be. But it is a huge thing that we get to do and it is a great opportunity and I would encourage anybody to take it if they can. So. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom